So welcome back to the InnoSource Contributor Role video series. Within these video segments, we will look into more detail what it means to be a InnoSource contributor and how to become one. We will check out what the benefits of making those contributions look like and which types of contributions will be welcome in a host project. Right, let's talk about that sharing mindset. Imagine you're implementing a new feature. Before jumping right into the implementation, slow down for a short bit. Is this a general issue that other teams could possibly profit from? Do other teams face the same challenges because they possibly operate in the same business domain? Or is that functionality orthogonal to your business domain? If any of this is the case, look beyond your own team and see if there is a shared solution that you could use or maybe there should be a shared solution that should be created. Yay, you found a component that you can reuse in order to reduce the efforts that you have to spend to implement a new feature. So you go ahead, introduce a dependency, and you're pretty much done, right? Except you're not only introducing a dependency on the architectural, like on the technical level right now, you're also introducing a dependency on another team working on that component. So suddenly, your progress depends on that team implementing features that you need, your team depends on that upstream project fixing bugs that are in your way. So how do you move forward with that? The typical solution is to cut dependencies wherever possible. This means that you can move independent and faster. However, it also means that you will duplicate the effort that others already invested. InnerSolves gives you a path in between those two options. The one option being fully dependent and the other option is to cut ties wherever possible. For inner source projects, you're actually invited to join the effort of creating things. If a feature you need is not provided and likely not on the roadmap of the team you're de possibly depending on, you have the opportunity to implement that feature and contribute it to them. Instead of spending all the effort to re-implement the entire functionality, you can focus on only adding the feature that you'll need. And in addition to that, you'll also get help and mentorship from the host team on how to make those modifications that you need. So what is another reason to contribute it back? It's not only the help that you get and the mentoring that you get, it's also the maintenance cost that the host team will take over for you. So whenever a new version of that component is being shipped, your modification's already in there, so you don't have to reapply it. As a good contributor, you will know how to balance introducing a dependency and the cost that comes with that dependency against the waste that you reduce by reusing a component from a different team. Right, so it's called inner source. That means it's all about source code, isn't it? Actually, there is more to it. Inner source projects want to be or should be well run and well maintained, and that goes beyond source code. You can Contribute other things, such as helping with documentation, bugs, providing good issue tickets for bugs that you have encountered. You can help by providing additional information on existing bug tickets that make it easier to make to fix those bugs. And you can actually also help with adding new tests. They don't actually have to be perfect. A failing test is better than no test at all. Or you can actually help to fix uh, failing tests. So in this section, we went over what it means to become a contributor and how to find opportunities. We checked quickly what the benefits of making such a contribution look like and which types of contributions will be welcome. We would like to welcome you back for the next episode where we will go into more detail about the contributor ethos, which will explain how to be a good contributor and how to make the path towards having your contribution accepted seamless and smooth.